every day, every night. And I was saying, now God, as I had to come in here and look at these women. They took me out of my apartment. The daughter of Zion came on and said, oh, sweetheart. She said, we're going to have to move you. And uh, he said, our mother said, for you to move you. And they were packing up my stuff. They packed my stuff up, took me to this old mother's house. They put me upstairs on a landing, not a private room with a bath, but put me up on a landing where everybody come up the stairs can see you, hello, that kind of thing, with a bed, some shelves, and a desk and a chair, and a closet. That was it. When I got to the closet, he was saying the closet, he said, now all this little stuff you want, don't you get rid of it. Because you can't wear that here. All oh, they getting down and Jane Brown, you got to take it off, babe. I don't want it up in here. <laughs> I had to take all my pay, all my stuff. I didn't have nothing. After I looked at that, I said, I didn't have nothing because they were wearing nothing but pants and stuff. So the saints going to help me. Well, here comes the woman with the little bag. And when I saw the brown bag, I was like, oh, God. Because I know you don't have no wisdom at all. If anything is, is in there, it should be hanging. But it was in a bag. And I pulled that dress out of there. It was flowers big as my hand. I kept going flowers, flowers, flowers. Like, ow! But see, you got to get in a hurry. I'm calling you in a hurry. Because you got a long way to go. And you don't have t- I don't have time to try to talk you out of your apartment. I don't have time to tell you. You got to follow suit. You got to do what I say. So I had to get some, I had to wear that dress. I had to wear some more pointed toe shoes, the pointed toe shoes. And they were even wearing pointed toe shoes at that time. And I had to wear, I shot it more than I think I do now. <laughs> Trying to get past that class. And then he put me in a all white for I wouldn't have to worry about what colors I was going to wear. He put me in white to my head to my feet. He said, you have to wash it by hand because you ain't got but three dresses and you're going to wear them until I tell you not to. So I had to wear those, those white dresses. I had to wash them by my hands and stuff. And then you hang them up. He said, because the body, he said, when you put them in the washing machine, the body will, get, will come out of it. This will hold your body. You don't you polish your shoes. don't want a spot on them. I want your hair done. I want you smelling good. I want you clean. He said, and he said, when they get ready to go, I want you at the door. Now, this is just basic training. Boot camp. <laughs> Walked me around into the mother's house that I was living with, and she was clean as a pen. He said, you see this house? Said, yes, Lord. He said, I want to stay like this. When I went into the kitchen, he said, you nothing is on her counters, nothing nowhere. You see this? And yes, he said, I want to stay like that. In other words, you ain't grown. You know, got your little stuff to the side. See, the other, he had to teach you natural to bring you into the spirit. He got to get you in order for you to take orders. Y'all understand me? Y'all weren't expecting this, were you? <laughs> but this is what I'm about. This is the foundation of holiness. You can be trying, 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 but if you don't have the foundation, you got to obey, you got to be able to take orders, you got to be able to learn what you don't know. If you don't know how to cook, he's going to teach you how. You don't know how to clean, he's going to teach you that. If you're lazy and then get up at 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock, he's going to wake you up in the morning. Get up. Because 12 o'clock, everything should be done. So all of this is going according to your level and according to your degree. Now, if you don't want to be nowhere, you can stay nasty and be in the wrong class. You can be in a class of nasty kids, nasty people. But if you, you can't step over into a real straight class, because you'll be ashamed. Because everything in there is clean. Everything in there know how to clean. They don't sleep. They get up before five. They get up at five o'clock. They pray at six. You still in the bed, yawning when you hear somebody say, oh, gee. Thank you for this morning, Lord. How? Oh, come on, God. <laughs> I was like, have mercy. You shame. You get over there. You slow. Try to put your clothes on, ease it down on your, because people, they've been there. You're going to come out of your laziness. You have to be around somebody that know how to do it, what to do to help you grow. You got to be able to see something and hear something. Y'all all right. 
But when he give you first orders, he gonna give you first orders. If he put you in there, uh, I didn't know, okay, you're gonna be a teacher. And then you're gonna lay hand. Then you have a gift of discernment. You're gonna have five gifts that have three, I have five eyes in it, and each one of them works together. They work all together. The gift of all knowledge, the gift of discernment, it works and they talk together. So I said, now God, he said, to have all this, I gave you these gifts. He said, now you gotta come up in every one. So when he give you a shot, he shooting every one of them. And so I was dead most of the time. People dragging me out of the chair. Both times trying to get me to a place to even be with anointing. You can't just come as you are because you got a feeling. I just want to serve you. You'll be scared to death because you'd be in there travailing in the night. Grabbing your side in pain. Crying all night long. You would never sleep. Because the prayer warrior got to know what it is for her belly to be pumped up. Hey, with the power of prayer. Hey, glory. Your belly gets full. Because when he get ready to say something, it gets full. You get pain across your back like a woman in travail. Because she's about to bring forth words from the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. She's bringing forth words from God. That's why you can't say a bunch of idle words when you come before him. He said, choose your words. In other words, say what you mean, mean what you say. All that groaning and hollering and screaming, that ain't it. Just mean what you say. There's a many day that I cried and I cried because I said, Lord, don't look like I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this. Because they were so strict and so timing. She told me, she said, let me tell you something. I'm on another time schedule. She was in that supernatural world. That spirit, could, her spirit would leap out and go to the spirit world anytime it got ready. First time I saw birthing, we was on our way to Gary. On our way to this church, or to Gary. And she was drunk all the way there. And her her stomach just started rising. Time we got to Gary, he was like a woman nine months pregnant. And I was like, it's my eye. <laughs> so when she got to Gary, I said, mother. She said, what is it? She knew I was gonna ask. I said, your, your stomach look like you pregnant. She said, I am, I'm pregnant on both sides. I got sons and daughters. I was like, help me. She said, you got to learn how to catch up the spirit. The first catching up is for you. See, so you see God and you keep on seeking him. You're going to fall down. You're going to mess up. You're going to get to, there's a place where you get to where he starts dealing with your mind and your subconscious and the problems you have in your life. But at first, you, he won't see as you're going to come. What time you say you're coming? Six o'clock. Okay. I was trying to get six o'clock. I had my robe on, had my rollers on, had, had my stuff. I'm running. Why? We got on my knees. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Get up, sweetheart. You don't come to me in rollers. You don't come to me with no robe on. He said, you wouldn't do that to some boyfriend, a man you get up with. You'd be primping all morning trying to make it right. You know you would now. We ain't gonna be caught with no rolls. Y'all know that. <laughs> He's gonna come before me with no rolls. <laughs> so I had to learn. He, had, he teaches us. He's our father. Yeah. Hey, glory. Yeah. He's our father. Yeah. He's our creator. Yeah. He's our birth and deliverer. So whatever pleases him, that's what you want to do. So I went and got me some, okay, I got one of my white dresses and come like that. And you know what? You feel so much better when you're doing it right. You ain't guessing. He is telling you what he don't want. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to hold you too long because we got some prayer to do tonight. We're going to, um, people, you know what? What's wrong with us Gentiles? He grafted us in, so we still blessed. You know what I'm saying? But we are heathens by nature. We don't want to bleed. We don't bleed now. I've seen a many things in my life, and, I, and I'm trying to finish my course. If I can get out of here. I want to leave this world 
So what are you saying? He said, well, give me that Ephesian. What was that Ephesian 2 and... Give me Ephesians 2 and 1 right quick. And then we're going to go to John, uh, St. John. No, we're going to 2 Timothy. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2 Timothy 1. We're going to go there a little bit. And then I want to go to Ephesians because I'm telling you about the things of this world. He don't care. Spirit, you got. That's what he died for, to get us safe. So you can't be prejudiced yes, over anyone. You can't choose and pick and choose who's going to be his because you don't know that. Anytime he said, I'm trying to, he showed me something and it don't have to be you in here, but I know when I got to this city, he told me, and, and people always pick certain spirits, but I'm asking God, because there's so many people that they love me and they come to me, a lot of time they come to me, and they have a crossbreed nature. And he taught me for six months about the lasciviousness and concupiscence, and those are evil passions. He took me down the corridor of many Spirits. He took me down there with a peeping tom. He taught me about that peeping tom. He taught me. He taught me about the bisexual. He taught me about the lesbian. He taught me about the homosexual. He talked about the spirit that just like freakness. He taught me about sex addiction. And and I was just, I was just puking. He <laughs> showed me so much stuff. And then I had to feel what they felt to have compassion on what they got to come from. I said, Lord, you take the power to knock this demon up. He showed me since I've been here, because I've been asking him. A lot of, a lot of young people, uh, they come to me, say, I, I believe you can help me. And I asked God, I asked him once since I've been here. And the Spirit told me, he said, you're going to have to seek me. He said, but I have an antidote. Hey. And I saw this thing going down. It was a spirit like going down. And it went down to a, a little, like a little root in the upper pocket. And he cut that root out. And when he cut it out, this, this thing came out. It was a full body. Came out. It was just a black spirit that came out of that body. I'm telling you, since I've been here. And I was saying, now, God, that thing came out. When it came out, then I saw the spirit drop another spirit down in him. Switch that thing like that. He said, I die for all sin. So you don't tell me 